Houdini 20 brings us some new nodes that allow us to process 3D scans that result in point clouds. But I also wanted to show a different way that we can use these that I think will be pretty useful in some certain situations. So I'll make this project file available on Patreon, but let's go ahead and make a SOP create just to start off with here. And let's dive on in. I'm just working in Solaris just because it's a little bit easier to just start in Solaris if you're gonna render in Solaris. So I just started to work pretty much exclusively in Solaris. But let's go ahead and drop down a sphere to start off with here. And let's change this over to a polygon and just crank up the frequency. We'll also drop down a mountain node and we're just going to crank up the amplitude here, maybe mess around with the size there and the offset just to get some weird shape going on. So from there, we need a point cloud. So let's just drop down a scatter under this and you can see that we have a bunch of points. Let's just set this to like 10,000 for the moment. And you can see that we have our point cloud. So let's go ahead and take a look at the new nodes. So we have three new ones. So if we type in point cloud, we have point cloud normal, point cloud surface, and point cloud reduce. So let's just drop down the reduce to start off with. So this is basically, let's go ahead and just crank up the scatter actually to 100,000. And you can see that we have a super dense point cloud now, something that you'd see in like a 3D scan, like a LiDAR scan or something like that. So we can drop down the point cloud reduce just to bring that down to a more manageable level. This actually works pretty similar to a like a fuse, I think, in my opinion anyways. Uh, so we have some different modes that we have here. We have our voxel size, which is basically like the resolution of our point cloud. So let's just leave that kind of at default there. We can mess around with that here in a moment. Let's drop down a point cloud normal because the point cloud surface requires normals on your points in order to generate the actual surface. And you can generate these however you want, but this point cloud normal is made for this and it works super well. There is one little caveat to this. So see, I turned on our point normals there. If we go ahead and start to mess with any of these settings, it kind of disappears. So you have to uncheck this compute normals and just recheck that. And as you mess around with these settings, it will come back. So let's just regenerate those. And you can see that they're all pointing towards what the center of the mesh would be once we actually generate that. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll drop down a P PC surface. And you can see that it generates a surface based off of our point cloud. So we have some different settings here. We can mess around with these. So obviously max subdivisions is gonna give you some resolution or change the resolution. You have smoothing iteration, so it depends on how smooth you want your object. And then the sample target is kind of like how closely it resembles your mesh. So as if I crank this up to like a 10, that's gonna obviously just make it uh, a little bit less, like, a, like if you drop down a VDE from polygons, if you're to raise the voxel size, that's kind of what you're doing here. So if we drop this down to like, and if we set it back to the, the two from default and then we lower that to like a 0.5, you see that it kind of goes a little bit closer to what our actual mesh would be. And we can go and we can mess around with our voxel size now and we could do uh, whatever we want with this to get the type of mesh that we want. And you can see that we have a kind of a dense little point cloud there. So this works really well in combination with the new quad remesh. So the quad remesh, we can use this. This is honestly what I think it's probably more useful for than anything is a way to quickly just remesh your, your models here. So you can see that we have um, remeshed our model with this quad remesh. Let's go ahead and drop down a switch here. And if we take a look at this, and let's wire in our original mountain. So if I swap back and forth between the two, you can see that we're kind of applying like a smoothing type operation to this, which I think is super, super cool. And if we get rid of, oops, not the point cloud normal, let's just regenerate those, the point cloud or reduce. This is going to make our mesh 
um, a lot more dense. And if we just crank up our free mesh, it's gonna obviously make our mesh a little bit closer to that original mesh. Still does a little bit of smoothing, as you can see kind of on the edges here, but overall, this is how the point clouds, uh, the point cloud nodes work. And I think if this is gonna be something that I will use kind of in a uh, situation, instead of maybe doing like a, a VDB from Polygon, so let's just set that up. So VDB from Polygons, your normal workflow for that, for if you wanna just like remesh something um, without using the quad remesh, or maybe you wanna smooth things out a little bit, you would drop down a VDB from Polygons, and then maybe you do like a VDB smooth, and you get a little bit of smoothing there. Let's do maybe like two iterations there, and then we'll do a convert VDB, and we get that back to Polygons. And you can see we get something that's very similar to the output from our, our point clouds here, but these can work a lot faster. So. And see that they're virtually identical in the outputs that we get, but this works way, way faster, especially if you were to like really need to crank up this voxel size. So if we'd like crank this to something super, super low, you can see, let's go even lower than that. The lower you go with the VDB from polygons, the longer that it actually takes. So you see it's taken a few seconds here to generate that and you know, if you have a big enough mesh, you're going to have some calculation time with this. So it's something, obviously this is a, kind of a, not a, a great example for this particular mesh, but you can expect to have some, some VDB from polygons take some time to actually calculate if you have this voxel size super low. I know that I've ran into some times where the voxel size makes it so that it takes a couple of minutes to actually calculate out, which isn't necessarily the most ideal situation. Whereas with this, this other method, we could just create um, a point cloud from our, our mesh, and then we could go ahead and just remesh it using the quad remesh tools, which are super, super quick. Now I do want to point something else out here though. It's can not, calculate that VDB from polygons. We don't need that. Let's go ahead and just delete that or get rid of that so we don't have to worry about that. But if I take a look at our pig head here, if we wire in our pig head into the scatter, and then we take a look at our point cloud surface, see it generates super, super quickly, but if we don't have enough points here, Let's drop this down. You can see that it starts to kind of shave off some of the ears here. And even if we go to this point cloud surface, we can drop this even lower, the sample target. And that starts to bring back some of the ears, but we get some of this blobbiness going on. So just make sure that you have enough points in your model so that it represents these kind of thinner, thinner pieces of geometry. Because so we look at our pig head, our original pig head. See, this is this is kind of like the more thin part of the mesh. And if we look at our scatter, if I drop this down to that 10,000 again, we don't have a lot of definition here in the ears. Whereas if I bring this up to 100,000, we've got a lot more definition there. So we start to get some of that definition back and that gets rid of that kind of blobbiness and the loss of of our mesh in those areas. So just be aware of that when you're using these nodes, but I think that these can be really useful for a lot of different scenarios. Like I said, they work uh, quite a bit faster than the VDB from polygons. Uh, it's just kind of my initial takes on it. So I, I think it could be very useful for remeshing purposes, but play around with it, see what you guys can come up with as far as use cases. I think that these are super awesome nodes. Um, very nice to see, and especially this point cloud normal node, this is gonna be super cool for, for generating normals on points. It's no longer super difficult, or yeah, I guess super difficult for, for new people to generate um, normals kind of pointing inwards. 
Uh, so that's a very useful node for especially newer users to, to Houdini. So anyways, hopefully this helps you out and gets your creative juices flowing with these new nodes. Um, play around with them and see what you can come up with for, uh, for the different uses for them. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. I do have a bunch of other videos on Houdini on my channel. If you want to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those out. But like I said, this project file will be available on Patreon if you want to grab it on there. But anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.